on today's episode of Gathering the Kings. Everybody says family motivates you. Yeah. You know, failure motivates me. I don't want to fail, you know, and, and everybody's going to fail. And it depends on how many times you pick yourself up to see how successful you're going to really be. You are listening to Gathering the Kings with Chaz Wolf, featuring fellow seven, eight, and even nine figure business owners who have real battle scars from business and life, but have prevailed as the king that they are designed to be. We welcome high performing entrepreneurs to the stage in order to reveal the real of the real on what it takes to build a successful business today. We dissect the good and bad decisions they've made along the way that give a true and accurate picture of the journey of success and how you too can get there. Through this dialogue, you will learn the value of growing your network and surrounding yourself with power players and kings like today's guest. Grab your pen and notebook because we're about to dive in. What's up, everybody? Chaz Wolf, Gathering the Kings podcast. Today, I've got Corey Reeves, King Stage. My brother, how you doing? How you doing, man? You doing all right today? I'm doing all right. You know, I, I like a guy that shows up kind of like, and then says, I've been running and gunning all day. You know, that's my kind of guy, honestly. So we're going to have a lot to talk about here today. And, uh, and we're going to see where it goes. But Corey, tell me, tell me what kind of business you got, man. I'm a real estate company. And uh, I'm probably still sweating from uh, trying to get a house listed and staged. And I've uh, got a trailer out in the driveway full of things that I've got to put up still. But I had yep. to make it back to get to you today. And I wouldn't get a awesome. business opportunity for anything. I've been looking forward to it. That's good, man. Well, I, I appreciate those kind words and and we've been looking forward to it as well. We love having high performers, man. So the fact that you're, when you say real estate, I know just from the notes that we've got on you that you're in multiple sectors of real estate, but I want, well, I'll give you, give you a couple of chances here to explain a little bit more on that, but I want to know before we kind of really get into nitty gritty, why, what pushes you, what drives you, you've been successful you're still going to keep pushing. You know, it started very young for me. We came from humble beginnings and I watched my dad struggle trying to build businesses most of my growing up years. And wow. we loved up in Northeast Texas and didn't have much money. Several different, you know, businesses were started. I watched him. I used to go to work with him when I was little. He used to hang off of tanks and sandblast and paint oil filled tanks and things yeah. of that nature. Hard work, labor intensive. I watched it. I watched it happen when I was growing up. And like I said, I wanted bicycles and I wanted things and my friends had, and I I actually started cutting grass when I was about 10 and I started just developing that to, to bring in more income. So I wouldn't have to ask my, my family for it. And so one thing led to another, you know, I thought I started papers, three papers for five years, eighth grade through 12th, worked at Wendy's, cut grass, started my lawn and landscaping business. Played in two bands, I uh, my school band, and then I had another rock and roll band. A- afterwards, after band practice, I went to band practice. So, yeah, yeah. But we, we, uh, you know, I kept moving, and my parents, you know, started getting transferred. My dad actually got a job working in air conditioning and a train. The train plant it was actually GE back in the time in Tyler, and he was actually yeah. nuts and bolts and screws in them on assembly line, and got into the sales program. And we left Northeast Texas, and I ended up in Slidell, Louisiana. Okay. And that was a game changer for me because I went from tiny little town to wow, you know. So yeah. you know, I was the guy at 15 and had the driver's license taking all my friends to Bourbon Street, you know. So, <laughs> but you gotta have money to do those things. So I, you know, I was working a couple jobs and throwing papers in the morning, and I, you know, I just it, that just that whole worth ethic just evolved, and you know, just kept going. Yeah. And I paid for my college. And when I was 17, I started putting in air conditioning and. I'd stayed with that trade for 35 years, believe it or not. And then throughout my my college, the air conditioning thing wasn't really working with my school schedule because, you know, you got to go to work every day, Monday through Friday. And <laughs> I was having to take off, you know, two days a week or three days a week and cram 12 hours of classes into two days. And those are long days, you know, when you're trying to go to college. And so I was watching these guys and I was like, you know, well, I'll go, I'm going to backtrack. Went into Kroger one day. And I was looking and they had their hiring sign. And I was making four dollars and twenty-five cents at my air conditioning job an hour. Mm-hmm. If that tells you anything. So yeah, yeah. actually the lead installer running running the team of new construction installs. And I'd been with them about two and a half years. I'd ask them for a raise. They're like, no, we're not giving anybody any raises. It was two brothers out in the country, you know, that kind of deal. So Kroger was actually paying five dollars and twenty-five cents an hour. So that was a dollar raise, and I got to work in air conditioning. 
And I'm like, <laughs> not working on the air conditioning, working in, in, in the, the air, air conditioning, conditioning right? <laughs> so I, I quit, I quit air conditioning and did it part time when they needed fill in. So I still stayed in the industry. I just, sure. I just went to another job that worked easier with my school schedule. And I was there for, I don't know, probably a year and a half. And a couple of guys that I work with, I had gotten out of lawn care at that time because the yards were so much bigger in Kentucky than they were in Slidell. And I was like, wow, you know, you're not pushing more in these yards. So no, no. I watched these guys pulling around lawn trailers and they'd come to work and they'd work at Kroger and then they'd leave and their, you know, truck and trailer was outside. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, well, we're going to go cut grass. So I got, you know, eight yards or four yards or three yards. I'm like, yeah. how much you get for those? He's like, well, you know, 25, 30 bucks. So me, Math starts uh-huh. running in my head. I'm like, all right, well, I got to work 40 hours at five dollars and 25 cents an hour, and I can do eight yards in one day at 25 dollars an hour, and I can push mow eight yards in the smaller neighborhoods that I found, not the big right. ones, and I will make the same thing that I'll make in 40 hours in one right. day. Right. So what I did is I started scaling it, and as soon as I got eight lines, I quit my job at Kroger and started <laughs> my own lawn and landscaping business. So. And that freed me up to go to school and work around my schedule. Well, what ended up happening is I did such a good job. I ended up hiring eight of my friends. And over a seven-year period, I grew it to one of Wolves' biggest lawn and landscaping companies. And I was handling 175 accounts. I had multiple trucks, trailers, and we were blowing and going. And I was like, this is great. And then I'm just going to give you the 30,000 foot overview. but We had the worst drought we've ever had. Wow. And it was uh, it was dry as like 1932 was was the worst drought they'd seen till then. Prior, and yeah. This was like in the middle 90s, okay? So everything dried up and landscaping was keeping me going. And I know you'd you'd asked me a few questions before we got on this podcast of you know things of uh, what to do, what is your biggest regrets, what did where's where's your slip and fall, where's your mistake at? Sure. Yeah. My That'll mistake was actually bringing in a partner the year that we had the worst drop. And uh, I had to split my proceeds with him because I was looking at selling the business and he was interested. So I brought him in. What little work we had left was just some of the commercial lots, apartment complexes and the landscaping jobs and things of that nature. So I didn't have a lot left over. And I just made a decision at the end of that season. I, I sold it to him and walked away. And I ended up after 10 years in Kentucky, sold my business, made a profit on it, and went back into air conditioning full time in Florida. So, <laughs> bro, yeah. you, you, here's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that you're you're a hustler, that you're a problem solver, that you're that I I don't know if you sleep. You you sound kind of like my people, right. which is which is great. I want to know how like it, does it all stem back to you know pop pop was trying, but, but didn't have a lot. And so there, therefore it's always just driven you to just take care of yourself, take care of other people. Like what's the, what you've described the engine. What's, what's the fuel in the engine? What's, what really wakes you up in the morning? Providing for my family. I've got a kid starting kindergarten here Thursday and I've got one starting high school. Wow. Yeah. So you got, um, you got a little bit of the spectrum. I do. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be covering both, both areas at the same time. So that's right. what's that's cool right. is my, my oldest son is in band, which is kind of cool. Cause I already know a lot about it because I went through it and I'm already doing as, you know, signed up to be part of the, you know, band boosters and working with the, the parents and the, the drill. He's, he plays drums and that's what I play. So, awesome. uh, so I kind of, it just kind of fits right in there. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, fa- everybody says family motivates you. Yeah. You know, failure motivates me. I don't want to fail, you know, and and everybody's going to fail. And, you, and it depends on how many times you pick yourself up to see how successful you're going to really be. Right. So, That's right. That's right. There's a difference between being scared to fail. And what you're saying really is I don't want to let my family down. Correct. Like at the uh, end of it all, I'm not going to be I'm, I'm going to have picked myself back up at least one more time. Well, I, you know, or keep picking yourself up. When you quit right. picking yourself up, you're right. you're succeeding to failure. You're you're done. Exactly. You know, yeah. and I'm not going to do that. Yeah, uh, I've never done that. You know, when I was over when I was over in Florida and doing air conditioning, I uh, I stayed over there about five and a half years and, and moved back to Houston where my family was. Had an opportunity here and came back home. I uh, stayed in air conditioning for 35 years. Got got my real estate license during COVID, wow. but I've been in real estate for probably 10 years because my wife, my partner is also managing partner in our Reese Realty group. And uh, <laughs> so 
we were that's, that's a smart move right there. <laughs> yeah. So so she had had 12 years of thousands of transactions on you know contracts to close and things of that nature. I know sales. I, you know, me and Grant have a lot in common when it comes to that. You know, 10x is right. So, you know, somebody's always selling. Are you being sold or are you selling? Right. Yeah. So I bring the negotiating. I've built businesses for contractors. That's that was my job was to develop, build, and train contractors to actually have a better business in the air conditioning world. And I've taken all of that knowledge and applied it to the real estate world. And I actually got laid off during COVID. And I took the summer off and watched the kids and got my real estate license a couple of years ago. And I went back into air conditioning and I was like, you know, I'm not really excited anymore about this. And there's a level on air conditioning where you can go. There's a ceiling on as far sure. as you can go, right? And we built Reeves Realty Group with an LLC and all that and have grown it. We're looking at $9 million this month already for the year. We're not big- looking back. You know? Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a big difference from, from basically how you started and, and even where you've come from. Sure. I want to know, you know, obviously within real estate, like you guys are selling property. I know that you guys are doing, you know, several, uh, you know, other things inside of, I mean, that's why I love real estate. I don't, I don't, I don't sell property. Well, I guess I mean, my fix and my fix and flip team does, but <laughs> yeah, there's lots of, lots of different ways to be creative inside of real estate. Right. Sure. And so my, my question to you first is, and and you can use the real estate business, I guess, or you could use the the previous you know businesses that you've sold. But I, in the process of building, is where I want you to go mentally, right? Like in the process of building, maybe before the nine million stage, what was a good decision that you made that you could share with the listener? Because that's where they are right now. They're trying to build. I would have to say, talking to successful business owners and getting knowledge from them before you make mistakes and spend money that is not going to get you a good ROI and find out from the experts that have already tripped and fallen on how to build a successful business and maybe avoid some pitfalls that you will fall. We all do. But if you get somebody that's willing to sit down and talk to you and kind of show you what they've done to be successful, and there's plenty of people that'll do that and help you along the way, I think the best course of action, if you're trying to, you know, trying to build a business, but you don't really know how to get there, look at what somebody else has done. The, the best course is the course that's already paved, right? You need to pave a road, right. your own road. But in order to get to that one, you've got to go on somebody else's that's already done it, you know, because yeah. yeah. there is there's success with companies that exist and not the ones that have failed. Right. Right. So you yeah. want to you want to succeed. Surround yourself by successful people. Right. Hundred yeah. percent. The the reality. Yeah. I mean, I think that the cost of or the cost of energy, time, even money of getting around those people is a better spent resource than than the on the back end losing because of the failures that could have been kept. Uh, you know, in the winning category. It doesn't mean that we're again afraid to fail. Sure. But what you're saying is that you got ahead. Are you able to grow because you got knowledge from from other people? So I'm going to flip the coin. What was the bad decision? What have you done where it's just like, oh, no. I've probably looked and it did done as well. Well, I can apply this to two different ways, right? So you just asked me the question I addressed earlier. I brought a partner in in the worst year that I probably could have in my right. own business. This, this is my second business that I've built, right? First one was successful, turned around and sold it. I wish I had brought a partner in the last year, but I did. But things happen. Right. Less than sure. learned on that stuff, but I can't predict the weather either. So right. real estate wise, I've made, well, I say me and Ashley have made some decisions where we have invested money where we didn't get a good ROI. But those are things, and that's I'm mainly talking toward lead generation and things sure. of nature, right? Okay. Because okay. if you're not careful, you will literally spend all of your money on hoping you're going to get leads instead of actually getting qualified leads, right? right. Everybody sure. wants to sell you leads. Everybody. Hey, I, we scrub them. We go through them. I'm going to give you the best ones. You're going to you know, make six figures in three months, right? It, 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 does not, it doesn't work that way, right? So what does is, is, is smiling and dialing and old school going to work every day and, and, and cold calling and, and getting out there and going to see people 
and introducing yourself and passing out business cards and doing local events and doing charities and all the all of it. I mean, there's not a box that this fits in, right? So you got to work if you want to be successful. You got to put your boots on and go to work every day. You know, that's right. Yeah. You know, everybody thinks real estate you're eating good food and having cocktails at three. That's not the real world. So right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you're right. I mean, there's this there's this stigma, good, bad, and different, of what success looks like, or or to what it even takes to get there. And I love how just plain it is. You know, you've got a phone, you've got a list, you've got some skill sets that you can learn, yep. and and you can drum up leads. Now, I do think that it's valuable to create as many lead sources as you possibly can. Yep. And I think that you would agree with that. Otherwise, you wouldn't be telling me today that you've lost money on trying to find new lead sources. Six. I like to have six, six different lead sources. There you go. So I guess what I, what I want the listener to pay attention to is not necessarily that you said, be careful because you can lose all your money in trying to find a good lead source. Right. But, but to heed, yes, heed that warning. Because yep. it's true. I've I've spent and lost a lot of money in that same exact vein. Yep. But it's unto finding the right ones. The right one. It, it's a it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Right? Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's like, you know, you pay for coaching, it's kind of like, well, this coach didn't work out, but you know, I spent five grand in six months on the on this coach. And then yep. you you move platforms and it's like, well, we'll try this platform. Well, this platform has got some pluses and minuses that are good. But then you're like, yeah, it doesn't have everything. And then you switch again. But what you're doing is you're actually learning. You're, you're, right. you're taking that you're taking that knowledge where everything that you do is a next step up, right? So it's kind of like w- when you're starting and you don't really have a direction, that's why it's important to listen to people that do. And then you can at least have a point of contact to go to and say, hey, what do you think about this, right? What do you think about doing this? People that are successful are great to bounce ideas off of. And right. that's where we're heading. I mean, I've watched a couple of people. My wife actually worked for a company, and I'm not going to name them, but they're in Houston and very, very highly successful. Uh, Barbara Corcoran, actually from Shark Tank, yeah. actually was, was with, wasn't with them, but kind of was a spokesperson for them. So, sure, sure. So my wife has been around some super high power people. And it's kind of like, she took all of that knowledge and that's why it was a no brainer when I said, Hey, let's do this full time. You know, let's, let's shake this, let's shake the industry because let's do something nobody else has done. I'm bringing 35 years of building businesses for other people and running my own at one time for seven and a half years with your wealth of thousands of transactions and commercial and properties. And, and let's merge the two together and see what happens. Hey, Kings and Queens, Chaz Wolf. I want to talk to you about something that's super important to me. We put a lot of time and effort, we meaning myself and my team, into this podcast, into the content that goes out every single day. And if you have been getting any sort of value or insight from this, we want it to be able to reach other business owners too. So we would love if you would like, comment, share, leave a review, post, share again, (laughs) all of the things on social media, on all the different platforms, or even on the podcast mediums of Apple and Spotify. We would love to be able to get our content into more hands, more entrepreneurs, so they can grow their business as quick as possible. Together, we are building a community of like-minded entrepreneurs who are committed to growing their businesses to new heights. So let's do this. Let's help each other. Let's help each other grow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I love I love the spirit and the, the passion behind it also, because it's not all just you know, X is the nose in the business, which is what you're saying. And then also, it's not also just the previous transactions and the relationships, but both together, all that together makes a successful business. That's for sure. Absolutely. What decision-making process or disciplines do you follow now? Like as you guys are, you know, you're, you've come together, you're in this, in this real estate space, you've got all this history. She's got all this history. What does a decision make? Like, what does that, what does that process look like for you guys now, knowing what you know? Well, we bounce each other ideas off, even though if she knows how she's used to do it, and I've done little compared to what she's done, right? So she she is my go-to if I have a question on contracts and things of that nature, but sure. she mm-hmm. is better on the operations side and I'm better on the negotiating and sales side. So yeah. when we talk, it's kind of like, that's your department, right? So, you know, they're asking about paragraph section, CD, you know, 43, 
That's that's <laughs> that's right. She's got it memorized. We actually won a quiz at, at our uh, Realty One Group Experience quiz day. We actually won the tournament because of her skills on contracts. She's got that's them memorized. Hilarious. So, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. But what's really cool is because when people call, everybody calls her. All of our friends that are realtors call her asking about contracts and things of that nature. Well, then they call me and ask me about air conditioning questions, negotiating, contractors, painting, roofing, because that's the world I, I lived in for so long. So right, right. it's kind of like you ask me how we, we do those things. We actually, we, we, we inform each other what we're doing. We bounce the ideas off of each other, but we really don't have to stutter and stay on them because we know our paths. And they're very clearly marked. So yeah, yeah, I love I love what you've taken what that I have in my marriage. You have inside your business, which is, right. and you can have it with another partner. Doesn't obviously have to be your spouse. In this case, right. it's both for you. Right. But the reality of it is, is that okay? We've identified your lane. We've identified my lane. And yes, we'll we converse. But right. we've we've given you full permission to run fast over here, and I'm going to run fast over here. And of course, yeah, we converse, but if I'm constantly in your way, you're constantly in mine, then then it, it it doesn't allow us to go as fast as we possibly can. Correct. Because then you stop each other. Yeah, 100%. It doesn't work. It's, so it's, I'm, it's in the decision-making process, I'm hearing action, quick, go fast, trust yep. each other. Yep. What else you want to add there? Loyalty. Okay. You know, decisive. Yeah. Because I think all your decisions have to be very decisive when it comes to other people's money and houses and homes because they're trusting yeah. you. You know, you got loyalty, you got trust, you got ethics. I think being ethical is number one on, on anybody's book, you know, ethics and honesty, right? Because right. that's how we are building our business. And that's why people trust us to do what we do. The house we were just at today, we were actually cleaning and staging and making sure everything was okay because we got pictures coming up in a few days. The clients aren't even home. We're going through their stuff. You know, so they trust us enough to be there and take care of their stuff without them being home. So, yeah, yeah, you know, deal. it is. It's huge, you know, and it's kind of like we go above and beyond. We were out this weekend on Lake Conroe doing a house and actually, you know, looking at it and going over it. We met the inspectors out there. We were actually taking measurements and doing photos and videos for our clients that are out of state for their interior designer to come in. And they're not even going to be back in town until November. So we're doing all of it for them. So wow. we're going to close on a house that they've only seen one time when they flew in and we're the ones handling everything else. So right. wow, we, we pride right. ourselves on taking and, and going to that next level. That's why I wanted to change the real estate market. Everybody can put on Facebook and Instagram and take pretty pictures and everybody look at me, look at me, right? Well, when the rubber hits the road, it's not about the pretty pictures. It's how your clients feel. What are you doing for them? What, yeah. How are you escalating their lives to make their lives better? And in, and in doing so, it improves your life. Yeah. So when you help other people, there is no other way to not get where you want to go. Right, right. Yeah, you know? 100%. I love, I love the mindset, man. I'm tracking right along with you. I want, to, I want to come at you in a little different angle here. Okay. I want you to take this real estate conglomerate that you described, and I want you to dwindle it down into one trackable metric. If you could only pick one thing to track forever and ever going forward, what would that one thing be? That's a tough one. one. Just one. <laughs> one track old metric. Well, you know, we always track knowledge, right? <laughs> hey, right? What 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 does that mean? What does that mean inside your business? What what kind of dollars are you tracking? Well, I think the best metric to track would be dollars. You know, I not I'm not even say dollars. I think the one trackable metric is probably contacts because contacts turn into dollars. Okay. Right. So the more contacts you make, the more people you touch, the more, the more interactions you have, right. you, you, you inevitably are going to make your business successful just by making contacts. Yeah. So I think contacts would probably be the biggest and the number one thing to track. Yeah. It's, it's funny coming from a fellow sales guy. We, we talked off air just briefly about our sales experience. You know, I, I think the numbers always will rule from an angle of it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't yeah. matter what kind of training you've gotten. If you just call enough people, yeah, you'll get it. And I used to say that years and years ago when I was running inside sales teams. It's like, look, man, I know you're brand new. You make 300 phone calls a day, you'll make the sales you need. I promise you. I promise you. Just if you commit to me, just do the work. I promise I'll get you trained up and you'll get better. But for right now, even if you don't even have me, if you just make the dials. <laughs> right. Read the script, man. Read the script. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you just got to take the swings, right? You just got to you have to do it enough times. That's the perseverance that I'm hearing you say. What book would you recommend, Corey, that a six-figure business owner read? 
Can you see that right there? Yeah, it says 10X. 10X. What is what is that? <laughs> I think anybody and everybody that wants to build their business and make it make it exponential needs okay. to read Greg Cardone's 10X. Yeah, 10X Rule is a great book. Well, um, it, what, even if you're a millionaire, why not be a billionaire? Yeah. So I come from a six-figure world, right? So I've always been in six figures. I want more than six figures. So owning your own business will get you there. That's that's the, that's the fuel that you put in the car. Right. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and you're right. <clears throat> the the mindset really cuz th that's what the 10x rule is all, all about is that it's going to take more than you realize. It's going to take more time, it's going to take more energy, it's going to take more money, it's going to take more contacts, right? It's going to take more sacrifices. It's going to take more. So, I learned that a long time ago when I read his book for the first time, it was like, oh, there's other people out there that are crazy like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like, we're not the only idiots out here on this island, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it gave you some validation to be a little bit crazy, but but the reality is still the same, that the mindset has to be of, this is why we push, this is why we grow. If we're actually trying to get there, wherever there is, right. it's just gonna it's just gonna probably take more than what you think. And so as long as you just kind of up that in your spirit of, okay, it's just gonna take more, then, then, then you'll guarantee your success in essence. Right. Well, we don't have, I don't have a plan B, right? I walked away from 35 years of age fact with some money in the bank. We're not super loaded. But we're all, you know, we're very successful. We're getting to that, to that point, right? And that's, we've already started hiring people at our business. So Reeves sure. Realty Group is, is, is getting bigger, but I, I don't have a plan B. I got it. I got two kids looking at me for food and, and shelter and clothing, right? So I, there's no room for failure in this house. So that's right. That's right. I love, I, I love the, to call it my kids. Yeah. Right. So that's right. it's like, you know, I'm raising them going, Hey, look, you know, I know you're tired, but you still got to do it. You promise something you stand behind your promise. The word, your word is all you have in this world. That's it. And if you break your word or you, or you can't be trusted or you, you don't stand behind what you say, right. You're not going to get anywhere in life. You've got right. to, you've got to stand by what you say and do what you say you're going to do. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. You're right. We've got to make it super clear and then, and then stick by it. That's the only way to make it uh, at least differentiate yourself. Cause there's a lot of people who will say, but then just not do. Right. Well, there's a ton of that. I mean, a lot of people say they're going to do something. I deal with it every day. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, you, I'm not going to, you know, dog on other agents and things of that nature, but it's amazing how good some are and how not so good others are. And it's like, we end up doing their jobs because we want to make sure both parties are happy with what's going on and not just right. our client, but both clients. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. The reality there is that you're, you're over negotiating or over delivering just, just to be able to make your client happy. But in the meantime, you, you actually make the other client happy as well. Yeah. By default. By default. That's right. What do you think about intentionally networking or masterminding with other entrepreneurs? Oh, I love it. I think it's fantastic. That's what I said before. I think it's the best way to learn how to get to the to, to the top, right? Yeah. And nobody's ever at the top. You, everybody's going to keep trying to get a little higher, right? So, right. you know, it's like with Grant, and, you know, and we're, we belong to all of his, you know, accelerator and all that stuff, right? So it's throughout my career, even in air conditioning, I always surrounded my, myself with people that have been in the industry longer or people that have been in the industry and were more successful. They made more money. And it's the same thing with real estate. I we we surround ourselves by people that are actually going after it, getting it done and and have really good ideas to do things, right? So I don't think you can ever not mastermind with other successful people if you expect to be successful yourself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, cuz I, I think the 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 very second that you think that you've got it together, somebody else, I mean there's just so many people that are successful. Yes. You know, and and when you open your mind to like really how much money is out there or how many successful people and we don't it doesn't have to be monetarily sure just whatever you're considering success whether that's with the family whether that's in business whether that's in money whatever the category is there are so many people that have it if you're open to the idea of abundance and right. then you go okay well I, now i just there's so many things clearly i don't know if these guys all exist and so i just need to be able to soak it up and that's what aggravates me the most when you hear somebody say i can't that's right well i can't yeah. No, well, well, I, what I you mean to say is that you won't. Right. Right. I, I'm too lazy to do it. Right. Or I'm scared because I don't want to fail. What's right. what? Well, if you don't ever fail, you never get up to climb. And and um, by default, you fail because you're still in the same spot. 
you're going to fail if you stay there because you're never going to go anywhere and you're just going to be stagnant in what your life looked like 30 years from now. Same right. place. Same old, same old. Not me. Not I got one last question here for you, Corey, and I want to know because obviously you've been you've you've had a lot of career change, you've had you know different industries, a lot of perspective here. If you lost it all, what would you do? Start over. <laughs> you said it so quickly. Are you sure? No, absolutely. Why? I've, done, I've lost it all twice. Okay, and so a th you'd you'd have enough gumption, enough fuel in the tank to go a third time. I got more. I got Five more times, brother. You know, most millionaires have filed, have filed bankruptcy at least once or twice. That's right. You know, because they kept trying and they failed, but then they figured it out. And yeah. now they're millionaires for a reason. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think that there's a there's a recipe to success. I mean, that's in essence why we have the show here is to try to break through to the listeners of hey, it doesn't mean that just where they are isn't necessarily successful. But in business, if we're tracking the dollars, like you said, right. we're talking about, you know, doing a million or two or nine in, in sales, then we've got to be able to, we've got to be able to have a measuring stick to some degree. And there's a reason why less than 10% of all businesses is actually less than 9% of all businesses do more than a million or more in revenue. So here we are getting some, getting some shots from you. So you've, you've got this recipe in your mind. So you would just, you would just apply it and do it all over again. Absolutely. Because you know, you, except for the one thing that made you fail. Right. Got to have some analyzation, right? And then you change it. And then and you, you make it. it better. That's, that's what life's all about, right? It's yeah. like you get a roadmap and you look at it and you know what happens if the bridge is out, right? You got to figure a way around it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because what's the other option? Stay put where stay you are. Put. We just, we just got done talking about that. <laughs> not, not staying put. Not you know, option. We're climbing mountains. We're going through the river. We're getting there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Okay, Corey, how can someone reach you? How can they connect you? Maybe they're in the area. They need to sell a property through you, or maybe they just like you, man. They want to reach out and get to know you better. Which is cool too, because I like riding motorcycles. I like going to the lake. We've got boating. We got we we bowl. We do a lot of things, right? <laughs> nice. So yeah, I love it. We're, we're in a bowling league. So yeah, we're we're we play golf. We live yeah. in the golfing community. So it's we we stay in our our network and, and, and our contacts and get out, right? And meet people in lots of different hobbies. Yeah. My wife says I've got too many, but right. I don't know if that's possible. Now, yes. what, what is that? What's that old saying? A, mass, a, a jack oh. of all trades and a master of none. So, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's not, that, yeah. That, the, the, the full quote there, I think you'd like that. You have to look that up. So yeah. that email, website, yeah. so, social media, how can they find you? All of the above, my friend. And my Facebook is wide open. So it's it's Corey Reeves, just like it's it's C-O-R-E-Y-R-E-A-V-E-S on Facebook. Perfect. It's Reeves Realty Group, R-R-G Montgomery on LinkedIn, Corey Reeves out of, out of Montgomery, Texas. And then Instagram is Corey Reeves also. So, and then our website is Reeves, R-E-A-V-E-S-R-G.com. And that's our business website. The email address is uh, Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at Reeves, R-E-A-V-E-S-R-G dot com. And Great. phone number is 281-932-2423. I love it. We'll put all that in the show notes as well. And and obviously, you've just been incredible here today. I want to give you one last opportunity to sign off with, with one last thought for the listener, specifically thinking, you know, they're in that building stage. They haven't hit the seven-figure mark. They're, they're, they want that one nugget. Corey, what, what are you going to leave them with today that helps them move their business forward right now? I'm going to have to say what's moved me forward and a lot of sleepless nights thinking, you know, what's going to happen next. And you got to have the faith. You have to keep faith in yourself that your plan that you're working is going to work, right? Yeah. So you're going to have rainy days, but you're going to have sunny ones too. You're going to get down, but then you're going to get back up again. And that's true with any business and the people that are struggling and thinking, well, do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? It's, it's all a process. If you work the plan and you stay to the road and stay true to what you believe in and, and be ethical and be honest, you will succeed. You don't have, there, there, there's no room for failure if you are driven enough to want to achieve your goals. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for signing off with such great words of wisdom. We appreciate you being here. We wish you nothing but success, blessing in your family, and of course, your businesses, all that you got your hand to. Thank you for being here. Jess, thank you, sir. 
Thank you for listening to Gathering the Kings today. I hope that you were able to pull out a few nuggets to go apply into your business right away. More importantly, though, I hope that you're realizing that it takes more to be successful than just being by yourself, doing it all on your own, carrying the weight all by yourself. What I have realized, not only in my own journey from multiple businesses and multiple different industries, and now interviewing over two or 300 other very successful seven, eight, and nine figure business owners is that it's tough to do it alone. And so Gathering the Kings exists to bring together successful entrepreneurs. In fact, we are putting together 1,000 kings, specifically who are grateful, but not done. We're intentionally assembling kings who fight tooth and nail for their business, family, and communities. And here's what we believe, that in the pursuit of excellence in those areas, that it ignites within us the responsibility to govern power and forge a lasting legacy. So if that relates and, and resonates with you, and you know that you need people around you, sharp, qualified, other very successful business owners, I want you to go to gatheringthekings.com. I want you to take a look at what we're doing and see if it makes sense for you to be part of our pursuit to 1,000 Kings. Talk soon.